Mm-hmm. So welcome everyone. On today we will get to more, maybe I don't know, slightly more fun topics than master theorem. We will look at the first uh, basic rule of solving problem solving on this so-called greedy algorithms, a greedy approach of solving uh, problems. You probably know Mr. Burns and also Gordon Gecko. Probably a good movie there from '87. The remake was pretty bad, but the original is, is um, pretty good. Uh, uh, so, if you're interested in finance at all, so uh, so what's the idea? So, what are we going to be learning today? Basically, it's a how should I say a short-sighted approach to solving problems. Basically, we look at we have some rule. We've come up with some rule of uh, solving a problem. And by making this choice, this greedy choice, we call this greedy choice, we reduce the problem to smaller, smaller subset of the original problem. So obviously this also may involve a recursion, a recurrence possibly, right? But the main point is that we don't store information about the whole uh, problem space. We make the choice based only on locally available information. And of course, what does it mean to have local information? Well, that also varies. It can be extremely short-sighted. Maybe there's some, some look ahead. But the main idea is that we don't look, uh, for the, we don't look through the full, whole problem space. We make choice based on some relatively simple rule, right? And then, of course, we do the same for the smaller, smaller problem, and so on and so on. Of course, eventually, Due to the power of recursion, of course, everything is solved. Now, so that's uh, so it's relatively easy to come up with something like this, even for relatively complex problems. But uh, what's the problem? What what is the problem then? Why actually is the book or or a textbook actually we use in class? The author actually says don't even ever even talk about this actually the greedy cho- greedy algorithms. Well, why the, why does the Jeff E he says in the book here? He says, don't even, mo- don't even, here in this book here, he doesn't like greedy algorithms, well, uh, here in this book. Why? Because they very rarely give you the best possible choice, right? So it's very rare to find problems where a greedy algorithm uh, is going to give you the best answer. It might often at times just not, even not work at all. So, uh, however, why, why am I actually, why do we talk about greedy algorithms? Because first of all, uh, they can give you a very good starting point. Like, so say, okay, a baseline perhaps of a solution, not the solution, but a solution, right? So that's, I think, is, uh, has some value, a certain value, and uh, you, you can, again, you can, you can get some idea, actually, what, what, you, what you can do. Maybe you have some, again, so you try to solve a problem. Uh, if you, let's say, again, job interview, you have some completely known problem, you never heard of this. You can see, okay, so let's start with a greedy solution. Maybe you get some solution, and then on, you can iterate from that. You can see, okay, expand on that, see, maybe you can improve on it, right? So, because again, it's, it's a relatively simple approach, right? So, it's a problem solving heuristic itself, right? It's an iterative process. Again, you tackle this problem and you keep making choice. All right, so let's see this first in action a little bit. Well, here's the, our choice. We want to find, uh, okay, our goal in this. A ridiculously simple example is to find the maximum uh, go down the tree, right, of choices, right, uh, the path, and find the one which gives you the most coins or the most expensive coins or whatever we want, uh, most gold pieces, right? So the greedy algorithm in this case would be to not look ahead at all, just look at the next possible choice. And when you are at seven, right, at the top, or we call root, right, the root of the tree, you take a choice. Which one is, gives you the most money right now, right? You don't look for the, you don't think about the year from now on. You think only about the future, about the next morning, right? So if somebody's paying you 12 bucks next morning, good morning, right? So you take this choice, good morning, right? And of course, as you can see, with this greedy approach, you take seven, 12, six, right? It's a greedy algorithm. You have a solution, you have some coins or some gold pieces or uh, whatever you want to call them, right? And as you can see, of course, plainly see that the green pass, right, which gave you the most coins, right, involved taking the non-greedy choice here, right? That's the optimal pass for this particular problem, right? But of course, 
in order to do that, you had to actually know something, go through the whole search space. So this is the downside. Sometimes, greedy approach might be the one you want to actually use. Why? You have this huge search space, right? And you can't uh, make a choice based on, you can't go through all the variations, basically. you just can't. Exponential complexity, you know, two to the power of 80 or two to the power of 100 and, and so on. Maybe you have multiple choice at each step. You know, then it's three to the power of 80 or, uh, you know, maybe a four choice, you have four to the power of, you know, 50 and so on and so on, right? So, here, of course, you could have gone through and you had only how many, how many possible paths do we have here? We have one, two, three, four paths only, right? So, easy to just do a full search, right? Brute force search also would work here, right? But so, hopefully you get this idea of greedy algorithm, how simple they can be, right? So they will often give you a solution, but seldom will give you the best solution. Okay, let's look at one more example. Uh, so, uh, again, highest scope, and this actually is applicable to, you know, in AI research and so on, right? So, you want to, you are at the point A, right, down, down here, right? And you want to end up, well, you want to end up here, right? But, if you do a greedy search, right, can I do, oh yeah, <laughs> uh, or I can do this, right? Yeah, no, I can't. Well, uh, if you take a greedy choice, you're here. You say you will go, you will measure the slope, right? Gradient, right? It takes, you know, maybe some small epsilon here, maybe, you know, both directions, and see which one gives you the highest, you know, uh, slope, you know, increase locally, right? And of course, you end up going here, right? You end up at the small m or what you call this local local maximum, right? And you don't you don't end up at the global maximum, right? Because why? Because here it is very really the the true path, the correct choice was very you know how should I say, uh, you know, less than Latvian English English. What's the word? Opposite of steep. Not not op yeah opposite of steep exactly. But I, I I could say that too. Slow. Not slow, unsteep, no. Come on, guys, you have better English than I. Come on. What's the opposite of steep? Uh, lessons. Flat. Flat. Well, flat, yeah. I guess there's maybe this is one of those cases where English doesn't have as many good words. But yeah, flat. Yeah, it's it's basically flat, right? So, <laughs> all right. So, uh, yeah. So that's so you see the problem, right? It's a greedy approach. But again, okay, now you see, see here, okay, yeah, it's obvious from the picture, you have a picture, you see, okay, you should go left, right, it's obvious, right, but if you have a huge search space, you have this huge, how do you find this local maximum, you can't just go through all the points, because if this is a real, uh, you know, a floating point, I mean, the value here is not just discrete, right, I mean, you could take some samples, I mean, there are different approaches. In fact, of the AI course in the spring, we should be taking, maybe we'll do a, we'd usually do an assignment where you try to find this maximum, right, so, uh, this is an important problem, but again, so greedy approach, right? If you have some locally, use only the very uh, locally available information, you will, there's a chance you will not find the optimal solution. I mean, of course, if there was a higher scope here already started high, right? You would end up at the actually where you want to be, right? So, all right. So hopefully now, by now you have, uh, you, you could already, hey, this class is over, you can just go, go implement your own greedy algorithms, right? It's pretty easy, right? So, but let's look at some, yeah, the formally, yes, so you have an objective function that needs to be optimized, maximum or minimum, right? You have some function, you know, we have multiple parameters, you know, f, f of x, y, z, and so on, right? On greedy choice, make at each step, right? We make, it, ensure that the objective function is optimized, right? So, the core part, another core part here is that it only has one shot, it doesn't go back. It's like no backsies, right? No take back is this, right? So it sort of like goes close ahead. And again, those who are already probably thinking of this, I mean, yes, you can do improvements on this approach as well, right? You can add some, maybe some backsies, right? But for now, right, this pure greedy algorithm, right? No backsies. You just go, go ahead and plow ahead. All right, so advantages. Easy, right? Even multiple greedy approaches, right? Also, relatively easy to analyze the, uh, the runtime, right? Usually, usually, right? It's, maybe it could be linear, could be even a log n, right? 
but the difficult part is that greedy algorithms uh, it's, it's extremely hard to prove that it actually is, gives you the optimal choice, right? Well, uh, first of all, you can disprove them basically, right? You can prove, okay, to find a counter example, hey, greedy algorithm doesn't work here, so it's actually not correct, right? But if, if, but if it seems to be giving you the best answers, and it seems to be work really well, right? But is it always, is this the best answer or just like really good answer, right? And proving that, uh, it's a pain, right? So, <laughs> Yeah, so coming up with solution, right? Even if you don't have much time, relatively easy, proving why is this the best approach, right? Uh, not so good, right? Again, it's like like traffic, like if you want to take a, you know, a Google Maps, right? You're trying to take the shortest path, right? From your, from your home to school, right? You can just go and see where the least people are, maybe, or at least traffic, right? Eventually you end up in traffic jam, right? If you don't have the Google Maps in front of you, right? Because, of course, Google Maps, uh, use A-star probably algorithm, algorithm probably, right? It has some more information. But this greedy approach, if you only look at the street ahead, right, uh, it's possible you might end up in a deadlock. Okay, so let's look at one more, one example, right? So, a naive example of greedy algorithm, a coin changer, right? You might have seen this example somewhere, right? Uh, this probably because it's usually the one that usually starts with this one, right? So, you have some money. You want to build a bot or yourself, right? You want to, you know, employee, instruct employees on changing coins or just build, probably mostly build a coin change machine, right? So somebody gives you money, cents, right? You want to give the least number of coins and you have one, five, 10, 20 cent denominations, right? That's correct, one, five. You also have two cent coins, right, in Europe, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. you do use two cent coins still, right? We still use one cent coins, which are probably going away, but okay. But for now we go 1, 5, 10, 20. So, so here's the greedy algorithm in action. You have 36 coins. I mean, 30, you need to give a change for 36, right? So what do you do here? You take, you give which coin? You give 20, which is the largest coin, right? At the moment, that's the largest you could possibly give, right? And then you have 16, you need to give change for 16, right? You give the change from the largest one first, right? Yes. And so on and so on. You end up 20, 10, 5, 1, right? And that looks pretty good, right? So do you think that, is that the, in this case, is that the optimal solution? It looks like it. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah, uh, so yeah, it looks like it, right? It's hard to find. I don't think you can find a counter example where this wouldn't be, right? You would think so, right? But in this case, yeah, you cannot find a counter example, right? Seems very really simple, right? So here's uh, a little a little uh, Python program. I added also some extra things here, like I give you some coins. By default, I, I also had Latvian or European twos, right? Five, 10, 20, 50. So this is a euro coin, two euros, right? Yeah, two euros, right? Yeah. Five euro bank, not 10. And of course, I could add more, or you could add some your own denominations. Okay, so what we, what, let's look at the algorithm in, 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 again almost like pseudocode that's in Python. So, we start with what? What is this? Well, I tell you here, but it's, it's a dictionary, right? Initialize, I'm using a dictionary comprehension here, right? So, what I do is I say, uh, for each of these, right? These are denominations, right? I will initialize them to zero, right? So, I have a D, uh, coins, z uh, one, zero, and so on, and so on, and so on, right? So what, the, what, do I, what else do I do then? I go through uh, the keys of the coins in sorted order, right? So what I'm using reverse, so I start with, uh, I'm sorting the keys, right? So this, I'm sorting these numbers, right? Right? And I start with what? With the 20s first, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so what I do is this. Uh, I try to see how many times uh, this highest coin at the moment will fit right in my current in current my current what I want to give you the change for right. So if it doesn't fit at all, this will be z this will be zero right. The key value will be zero right. Remember this is integer division right. And then, well, I have something left. Possibly 
if this was over, like, you know, 2000, you know, 36, right, uh, this will give you everything, right? Everything, so, you know, nothing changes, right? It's pretty nifty algorithm in this case, right? So I don't have to, not, not too many ifs, right? M my most, my ifs are just basically uh, the debug if and uh, uh, return if, right? So then I do this until I have no sense. And of course, I could say it's, you know, zero or less, right? This is a little bit dangerous, this type of approach, but it's kind of nice and readable, right? Um, uh, right, so uh, in practice, I prefer to use uh, something like if uh, sense less equal zero, right? Yeah, because again, if not sense, right? Again, because of the because of the true C value, because false. Right, yeah, but okay, but yeah, but this it looks readable, it works actually, right? So eventually, this means is eventually sense will get down to zero, right? Eventually, you know, in this particular case, right, you know, since the denomination is one, right, unless I give some really weird coins, and we'll get to that actually in a moment, right? The weird coins. So, uh, and what I do is I return sorted coins items in reverse order. So basically, I give which ones. You know, by coins, right? You know, I give I give the results. Also, what is the total coins? Where did that come from? Uh, where am I using that one? I'm trying to find. Where did, ah, here I saw. Oh yeah, okay. Also, I make how much? Uh, actually, just to double check, right? Uh, this is I think is uh, I for I coins values. Ah, some I for I. Ah, how many coins? Okay, how many coins? Yeah, how many coins? Right. Okay. Now. Okay, let's let's start my notebook. All right, I have my machine. What do I have this morning anything good? No, just the usual. They haven't really upgraded the machines. Okay. Okay. Now, so let's give thirty six cents, and we'll get the answer, right? So, and I think the bug is true. No, the bug false, right? The bug. All right. So let's do the bug is true. The bug is true. Right, you can see this in action, but I think you, you're not going to be surprised, right? Okay, yeah, <laughs> we can see what happened actually, right? So it started with trying with 20, maybe where's my debug, um, current 10 coins, right? Uh, and maybe I'll add this, adjust this a little bit, uh, uh, C, right? Yeah. Current coin. C, right? Uh, mm, total Set, sense to process, sense to process. I'll just do this using this new approach. Coins. Uh, I'm lazy. I'll do something like this, right? Yeah, this is a, a shortcut from uh, Python 3.8, I think, or 3.6. So they added this this approach. So let's do this one more time. Okay, yeah. So current coin is two thousand, which is a twenty-year-old banknote, right? Uh, and you see, nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. And eventually, we get down here, right? And we see the dictionary has has been updated, right? So this is like really fine-grained. See this algorithm in action, right? So yeah, the bug is true, right? Okay. So we did this before. I'll even go one more time. Okay. All right. So uh, let's do three hundred seventy-nine cents, right? Just some random value, right? On, yeah, of course, you take with two euro, two euro coin, one euro coin, and then you have cents, and it seems to work, right? And then 43 euros, right? You can give me some other number, I'll be happy to run it through, right? But, so it seems to work pretty well. And the question is, is this greedy, al is greedy algorithm the best choice, is actually optimal choice for, for euros? What do you think? Is it? But if you find me a counterexample, I'll change my mind, right? Right? But for the moment, for time being, let's assume it is, right? Uh, again, but we will go, and I will make maybe a text here. Country with the balloon, the balloon, the balloon coin country greedy. Yeah, right. Now, right, so 
What we'll do is we'll imagine a country, which I can I can run my cells here. So, okay, yeah. Right. So I have one, seven, ten. So I have my so this is a weird country, they only have three coins, one, seven, ten, right? And I want to get a change 41 cents, right? Or whatever they call them, or the balloons technically, right? Okay, so what do I end up with? Uh, let's take a look. One, seven, ten. Let's take a look. Ten. Then ten, four tens. Uh, one, one. Looks okay, right to me. Well, you only need four coins here. That looks okay, right? Right? Well, and it says where it fail, but it doesn't seem like fail. Well, I'll show you where the problem is, right? I'll, I'll make a new cell, right? It looks okay. This looks, this is, this is looks good so far and I will do one more so coin changer since we will do 15 of course the denominations will be of course one seven not so good let's see what happens. let's see will this give us the best optimal optimal answer right and of course it gives you 10 and 5 ones, right? So, what's the optimal answer here? Yes, of course. Very good, right. So, that's the issue here, right? In this, if you lived in this weird country, this algorithm would break and fail. Because I can, why? Because I can find a counterexample. That's the easiest way to disprove something, right? Find a counterexample, right? I heard of PhD thesis. It's like only like 10 pages because they found the counterexample of something famous, right? And you know, it's a famous thing. You, should, you find a counterexample and you solve it. Well, you disprove the problem, right? Well, so. It will also fail if you have a no ones coin. Like yeah. If you don't have ones, of course, that's another thing, right? If you don't have no ones, you just can't solve <laughs> the problem at all, right? That's like there's no, well, there's nothing to can solve the uh, problem if you don't have ones, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we tried again, uh, in class I tried the Soviet, uh, you probably don't know the Soviet uh, money system was 1, 3, 5, 10, and 25, right? And, right, well, 47, right? So, 21, um, 2 tenths, I think this works, actually, still works correctly, I believe. Right, actually, still works. Yeah, so, here, it still works correctly, I think, right? Uh, on the fake rubbles, right? You had one, four, five. Again, this is again you can see where it fails, right? You had this one, four, five coins, right? So five, four, one, right? It would work. So somebody, I was looking for counterexamples, and apparently there was some Indian, I think, as a state or maybe a, a, some uh, sub country, maybe some, or actually a country somewhere. There was we had five, ten, twenty, twenty-five, right? And I could add also advance, of course, as well, right? Right, so we'll change once, of course, we can add one as well. Let's assume one is okay, but that's right to make this legal, right? And yeah, 25, 10, 5, right? So three coins, but we could have used how many coins here? 40. Uh, we had 40 cents. How many coins could we use? 20 or 20. 22 20s, yeah, 220s, right? Yeah, it's not happened, so maybe there was a transition period or something, yeah, 20. 20, uh, you know, whatever the money they use, uh, you know, the balloons, right, and 25, right. So, so the hypothesis, again, um, we could maybe false also, if something wants, we can formalize, I think greed fails in this approach if the next denomination is less than double, right? That's, 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 that's my hypothesis, that's what just came up, you know, just playing around with this. I believe that it, it should hold true, but I can believe, right? Believe is nothing without proof, right? So, uh, it's a hypothesis, right? Uh, you could probably maybe find some papers where it is formally proven. I'm sure this has been a solved problem, right? Uh, so, but uh, what, where does greedy, uh, at what stage does a greedy algorithm fails, right? So, because you have to know more about X, basically, it fails whenever you need to know more about what other coins you have, right? Remember, the greedy algorithm doesn't care about what other coins that you have afterwards, right? It just looks, okay, what I have right now? What's my biggest coin, right? So, uh, maybe you can find some other counterexamples, maybe, or we can try some other weird money, right? 
Um, maybe let's see, but there's a Gemini, not anything about some weird money. Let's do it. Let's see. Let's see if it does. Right. Let's look at them. Mm, generate is AI. Let's do. Let's try. See. You know. Let's see. Um, no, no, no. Let's. Let's see. Some more examples of uh, money. Money. How should I say? Um, money nominations. Failing to obey, no, 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 greedy algorithm. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see if AI is good enough. Yeah, one ten five. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, one five ten. Okay, twenty five. And well, here, I think uh, we already looked. This, this is. I think this will be okay, right? One ten. Ah, yes. To me? Okay. It's for the okay, it was the last one. Yeah. As I see. Okay, five five five, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's gonna work. Okay. Right. So this should work. This this should be this should be fine, except it, yeah, so I'll put fourteen, right? I'll put fourteen. Then it'll fail. Right? So it's not for so it works for some. So, so again, so here's the thing. It it works for some denominations, right? You know, it, it's optimal for some and not optimal for others, right? That's another thing. Why, so, why it will fail? I mean, uh, it, five, will five. Still, it will still will still give us five, five, and four. So, it's five, five, let's think. Uh, oh wait, um, five, four, 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 uh, five, five on uh, that's six. That's six. Four, four. Plus two ones is less five coins, right? I, I would say if we have twelve, it will fail. Yeah, 12 also fails. And also on 14, it also fails, right? Because why? Uh, because it will give you answer two fives and four ones, right? And that's six coins. Right? No. It's three coins. Wait, am I, am I confused? Five, five, four, three coins. Yeah. Five? Ah, right? Okay, yeah, right, you're right. You're completely right. I'm, I'm not I'm asleep. I'm asleep. So 13, 13, you fail on 13. Okay, sorry, or 12. Yeah, or 12, of course. Two on, yeah. 20, yeah. 20. On 20? 12. 12, 12, 12, yeah. You're right, you complete. I can only forget, yeah. 554 will work, yeah, yeah. Why should, yeah. <laughs> but uh, oh, let, me, let me do also printing this because again, AI for some reason thinks that it's, you can't, uh, I need to print all these results because the notebook of course remembers only the last one, yeah. So it's interesting, so, Right, the five, six coins, and instead you could have used three ones. So again, my hypothesis, right, uh, is not quite correct, right? Uh, because here, uh, the next coin is not less than double, right? It's actually more than, I mean, it's more than double, right? So it seems like there should be some, you can't be too close. The next coin cannot be too close, but also cannot be too far, right? It's more about multiplication. I yeah. Think. So there, sh there, is, there should be some rule, maybe something you can find some, if you find a link to actual academic paper, for example, maybe some, some more discussion, right? I would be happy to add this here. Why, actually, at which stage it actually works, actually, right? So, but, of course, people who work on monetary, you know, uh, at the banks, right, uh, you know, on national banking, they, of course, know about this problem. Well, uh, they try to optimize. Of course, it's not a... I mean, not the end of the world, of course, right? Assuming the coins, you know, uh, you know, it's not, it's not gonna, you know, kill or break the country, but still, uh, uh, you know, it's, a, it's something to save money on, right? And uh, they do work on this, right? So usually they try to avoid this, you know, try to make it optimal, basically, because it's a very simple algorithm, right? For a cashier, right? You don't have to think about it, right? You say, okay, I'll take the longest, you know, the biggest, uh, you know, biggest money, I'll just give you, start with that, right? Simple imp to implement. Right. Okay. Yeah. So five cents. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. So enough. Uh, so again. So to do, if you find, it, give me. I'll, I'll be happy to add today. If you find an example of some uh, uh, country where it's failed, maybe Jim and I can tell us. I don't know. Uh, we can try. Maybe use some fake country. Let's see. Maybe I'll do this code. Uh, Provide, show show an example of another country where the coins did 
did not work with greedy algorithm. Okay, let's see. Oh, and this is a Gemini prompt or no? Yeah, no, I see it's a oh, it's once uh, uh, generate. Yeah, but it's, I don't really like this approach of working, right? Yeah. Yeah, we already looked at this already. Yeah, okay, so close. I will delete. Okay, so it's not very that helpful. I don't really like using the, this this approach. Okay, so are we are you guys good with the greedy approach? I mean, do you understand the idea, right? Yeah, and you also see that it's not also uh, it could be tempting, but it might also lead not to the best solution. So now we have time. Let's go to another greedy problem. Problem is interval so so-called interval scheduling problem. Uh, it's almost avail. It's it's a uh, it's an optimization problem, right? Um, it's pretty much in any industry anywhere, right? Uh, so you have some uh, you're going to school, right? You have some lectures, right? And basically, you need to find the maximum number of lectures you can attend in a day, right? You're going for quantity, right? Not for length, but you want to see the most. You know, you see, you want to see all different professors or whatever, or lecturers or whatever, right? You want to catch them all in one day, basically. So, uh, how do you do it? You have the schedule. You have to. You go to schedule the RBS, right? And you know, you can choose basically here, right? Of course, here it's relatively, uh, you know, not, not. It's kind of hard for you to do anything because, of course, the times overlap, right? So, but again, you see some interesting, like you can, you know, you go to Kaspar, or you go to Sander, right? Design your live workshop apparently today, right? So you want to see that as well. But you also have MathLab Club um, Group BC, for example, maybe I don't know, right? So, so well, technically, you are not you're not no, you're not allowed to skip all of the lecture, technically, right? Of course, for those of you who want to see all the lectures, you just say yeah, you say sneak out, right? You go see, okay, they look okay, you know, and then you go, you know, and if they are really boring, you sneak out and uh, you go for the next lecture, right? But yeah, so that's the idea, right? So you want to optimize, you have this full day, you are at some, you know, I don't know, conference or something somewhere, right? And you want to, you know, catch, catch them all, right? But it's actually, this actually, of course, kind of silly example, but you can actually apply it to also if you want to do something, I don't know, some business use, right? There other, 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 you can transfer to some other industries, right? So, so, uh, how could you solve this, right? You have this, uh, you have starting time, ending time, right? You have the length, although that you can calculate how long they are, right? And you have, okay, you have lecture, right? You have other stuff, but yeah. So, right, so how, let's try to find, come up with a greedy approach, right? Without looking at all these different combinations, you have like maybe a couple hundred different lectures, right? So, you have N schedules, you have starting time S, F uh, time, starting F time, right? S time, and F finishing time, right? So you want to maximize the number, right, of the lectures, right? So, so this is one approach, earliest start time first. So you go to the lecture which starts first, right, in the morning, 6 a.m., right? So hopefully you can see the problem is this approach already, without even going to the code or anything. It's, you go to the first lecture, it turns out it's an all-day lecture till goes till 8 o'clock in the morning, in at, at the evening, and, and the lecturer has locked the door and doesn't let you out, right? So you can't even sneak out, and you are really, really despondent, right? It's some sort of psychological experiment of who survives, right? So, and, and meanwhile, there are nice 45-minute uh, lectures during the day, which you would love have, would have loved, loved it, attending, but you were too lazy to look at the, all the schedules, right? Because you are greedy, right? You look at the first time first, right? You don't go through the whole lectures, right? So, so this breaks, right? So this approach, let's, 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 let's see, right? So, so 916, right? The big long lecture is not as crazy as my example, right? But then you have 10 to 12, 12 <coughs> to 13, right? So these, instead you have been taking these three lectures, but you went to this early morning lecture and you were stuck there all day. <coughs> Again, of course, you could argue, yeah, it's a full day, maybe this is a really good lecture, and so on and so on. But yeah, so, we're assuming all lectures are equally important, and that one hour from, you know, is more, you know, more important than, you know, five hours from, from one guy, right? So, so that's one approach. Easy, again, 
what I want to get at is that greedy, you could come up with a greedy solution quite easily, right, to a problem, right? So it's a rule, heuristic, right? You say, okay, early start, start time first, simple rule. But as you can see, by the contract example, you, got, you, you will get some solution, but you might not get the best one. So we get to next approach, right? Uh, let's try shortest ones, right? Okay, shortest ones first. And in this particular example, they, this would be a great approach. Shortest ones first, right? We, we sort by the length and we go for the short ones, right? Or maybe we have a secondary key uh, starting time first, but okay, you take the short one, you start with the shortest one first, right? Okay, so, but hopefully you can see the problem here, right? You see this example here, right? So, if you pick the shortest one first, right, we skip on two nice uh, half-day lectures, right? And again, we are unhappy. So that's the second, again, we come up with a simple rule, um, we find the context there, right? So we have two fail. We have two fails so far, but I mean again, the, the, again the insidious again that's why again the, the insidious nature of greedy algorithms is that they might work for some some spaces like we saw here. The shortest interval, smallest interval first works for this uh, this lecture, right? It work, would have worked, giving you best solution, right? Okay, so now one more, right? So this is the approach, right? 9, 12, 11 to 23, you know, right. So, one more strategy, longest interval first. Okay, well, I think that's already at least suspicious, right? Because we already saw this. This is not gonna likely to work, is it? Do you think it's gonna work? No, no. Let's look at this example, right? You have, what's the longest lecture here? 9 to 12, right? That's three hours, right? Start nine, you know, we got 12 non-stop, right? Instead, you can have, have nice two lectures here. Two hours, no, one hour, an hour 30. I mean, they'll be a little bit shorter, but you have two lectures, right? So, again, this would have failed. So again, if you know this problem, so it turns out, they say, you might be saying, okay, okay, this is, you know, greedy, greed doesn't work, greed is bad. We can't solve this problem with a greedy approach. But there is approach. So you might, if you, if you go scroll down, you'll see it. Uh, of course, what's the approach? The greedy approach. There's a couple more. We can try. We can come up with some other. We can, of course, some random approach too would be. But well, but we want some some other. What other information do we have here, right? Let's look at our our schedule, right? So we have this time schedule, right? So we started at. We looked for length, right? Length smallest longest. We also look at the starting time. So what do we, what should we have not we looked at? What should we look at? What should we, what should we try? Any ideas? Again, we basically, that's all we got. We have only this information, you know, you know, we can of course look at the instructor's names, you know, that's all. another approach, greedy approach, look at the shortest instructor get name, right? But uh, we're not covering that, that's, that's another greedy approach, right? Yeah, but uh, uh, hopefully you see why that will not be guaranteed to work all the time, right? But here, right, what's, what other piece of information we have not considered here? Time start, time end. Yeah, we have time, we, we consider time starting time. We consider the length, but we have not used the yeah, we have not used the ending time directly. So here is interesting approach. You basically try to start, look for lecture which ends first. Yeah, okay, but there's one more, yeah. Uh, this is before that, uh, uh, there's one more example. Look for the ones which give you the least overlaps. I mean, again, you do some work. Uh, so the idea is this, you look for ones that don't give you conflicts, right? Yeah, so this is gives you the least conflicts, right? It only has uh, overlap is these two, right? But the problem is then we have to pick these one, right? So, but this is the optimal solution at top, right? So this also is actually a bad choice, right? In fair, uh, another problem is this choice, you have to also calculate these conflicting intervals, right? Which is also computationally relatively expensive, right? So, 
Uh, again, that's another bad rule. But so the good rule is this one here, right? So this is apparently, yeah, not apparently, but actually is going to give you the best solution. So this is pseudo pseudocode, right? Basically, you pick the lecture which ends first, out of your time, right? Meaning, and then you get, you, after that, you have subspace of the problem space. You take the next lecture which ends first, out of the remaining time, and so on and so on and so on. And this approach will guarantee you the optimal solution. And in a greedy, very optimal time, linear time, right? you just keep going, right? You don't have to do much, much extra work, right? So pretty nice, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so we'll do an object-oriented uh, approach here. You know, you probably took some OOP in, in Python, right? So we have a class. I, I made a little init, right? Uh, name, start, finish, right? It's pretty simple. And um, also a rep, uh, pretty print, right? And we'll have some lectures. We'll have a list of lectures, right? This is my init, right? You could also come up with some names. Let's come up with some, some funny names, I don't know. A would be ancient history. B would be, I don't know, basket weaving, right? And C would be... Calculus, yeah, let's do that. Calculus, uh, basket weaving, very famous course, uh, especially in sports in America. So what is doing that course? Basket weaving. Yeah, well, I've never heard. Of no, it's a joke that if you take, uh, if you are professional, uh, like you oh, play, okay. yeah, it's an easy course to pass. So you do basket weaving, but but it's a joke, of course. I don't think there are any many college which actually have it. And actually, I imagine the real course actually is quite hard to pass. I mean, you probably have to weave a basket, right? And it's not that easy, right? Who has weaved a basket here? No, I've seen some impressive work at the natural, you know, um, museum, not museum, but the uh, natural park, uh, the, 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 the marketplace, right? It's not easy, right? But okay, so ancient what? Uh, ancient history or something, right? Okay. And D would be what? Structure. Data structures, of course, why not, right? Uh, and E, English, no. Or some engineering, no. Mm, electrical engineering. Electrical engineering. Electrical engineering. F would be financial gambling. Financial what? Gambling. Gambling. Okay, very good. But we, <laughs> we, we G, have, G. No, well, financial engineering. Oh no, financial uh, prediction. Prediction or something like that. Yeah, analysis. Yeah. Prediction. And, and G would be gambling. Yes. Yeah. Gambling analysis or something like that. <laughs> uh, Okay, so you have some cool courses, right? And of course, we can't see them all in one day, right? So this is more interesting. Yes, all right. <coughs> now, uh, so, uh, yeah, so we are going to do, I'll put some, so this is the algorithm, right? I'm going to say, okay, a list of lectures, right? I made some type hints, right? Python is nice, uh, you know. Um, and we are going to return a list of lectures we can attend, goal being maximum number of lectures, right? So, if you have no lectures, we return an empty list, right? Easy. Base case scenario. So now, by now we know what sorting means. This is using what? Team sort, of course, right? We know team sort, right? So, who knows what's happening here, right? So this is sorting algorithms often, right? This is one of those cases where we are not giving just numbers. We are giving objects, right? With some properties, right? So I'm giving a key, right? I'm passing an anonymous function, given a lecture object, right? I want to return a finish property, attribute, right? And that's going to be our key, right? That's going to be used as key. So this is going to be used for comparison because team sort sorted, which is using team sort, is comparison-based sort. So we pass a, a, we need some sort of, you know, what we're going to sort by, right? So finish, right? We want to sort by finish. I mean, again, it would be very easy to start by uh, also start, right? Or name, you know, but which is silly. But uh, finish, right, is what we're going to use, right? <coughs> and we can do deb debug, right? And then for lecture, so, again, you, you read Python pretty easy, right? So we start with uh, we sort, right? That's our schedule. We take the first one, right? We know, we know there's at least one. Then we go through the rem remaining ones, right? Right? And uh, now the question is now is it going to work? Uh, if lecture start, 
right? Finish. So we check, we check, or the one current does it start in time before our previous one finish, right? So can we use it? If we can't use it, no, it's too bad. We miss that one out. So let's see which ones can be a ten, right? Return schedule and get schedules debug true. Let's take a look. So. Uh, so what can we see? We can see ancient history, calculus, electrical engineering, and we can also do gambling analysis. Yeah, so we can have four lectures in one day. Not so bad, right? So, so again, so again, so why does this work? And again, we'll, we can discuss this maybe after the break. Let's do break till ten. So we'll discuss again why why this works after ten.